Hey guys, welcome to the 11th video in the system design course. In today's video, we're talking about abstraction and layering. Now, in case you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, I highly recommend that you watch them for optimal understanding of the concepts covered in this video. Now, in case this is the first video you're watching on my channel, you need to know that this video is part of a completely free course on system design, where my promise to you is that after you watch this free course, you don't ever have to buy a system design course in your life. So feel free to subscribe and bookmark this channel because you get some seriously awesome free content here. All right, so let's get started and let's first talk about abstraction. Now, abstraction is an important concept to understand. It basically means simplifying the details and this essentially helps us in communication. So with software teams, communication is extremely important for everyone to be on the same page regarding what we're building. When we build complex systems, we want to explain the details of how the systems work, depending on the technical understanding of the person we're explaining to. For example, let's say that you've built a software. Now your customers may not need to understand how the entire software system is working. So we can abstract away a lot of the details when we explain the workings of the software to them. Similarly, someone from the legal or business teams might have a better understanding of how the software is working than the customer that uses it. But even the business and legal teams don't need to know everything because of the limitations in the technical understanding. So let's just say that they're able to understand details at a different level of abstraction than the customer. Let's think of someone like a product manager or a product owner. They would know the product really well, way better than the legal and business teams. So the product team would understand the product at a different level of abstraction, which is lower than that of the business teams. So by now, we have three levels of abstraction, where the customer was at the highest level of abstraction and the product team is at the lowest level. Now there's obviously another level of abstraction that's even lower and that's that of the engineering team that works on the product. They know everything that's required to know about the product and they're technically at the lowest level of abstraction for the product. But it's important to note that even this is not the lowest level of abstraction possible because that would end up going down to the level of individual bits and then even the hardware. But since we're designing software, the level at which the engineering team is, is usually considered the lowest. Now above the customer also, there can be other higher levels of abstractions, like for example, the one of the shareholders who have even less information about how the product works. And then that of the media professionals who help in advertising the product because they wouldn't know as much as the customers or the shareholders. So I hope you get the point. We can keep abstracting the product till the time it's more and more simple to explain. So essentially, you've understood abstraction by now, which is that there are levels of abstraction for people depending on the technical knowledge that they have. So there's no point of sharing API level details with a customer, right? Because they won't care and they won't understand. So this means that as technical people, we're responsible for being able to communicate the details of the product at a different level of abstraction. Now as technical people, we're best suited to communicate the details at different levels of abstraction because we know how it works at the lowest level and going from the lowest to the highest level is easy and straightforward for us. Now there's a problem here because in most cases, when we abstract away details, there's a high probability that it would end up incorrectly representing the software. Meaning that just to explain the software to a non-technical person, we have abstracted away the details, but now they're incorrect and that's not really how the software works. So we need to balance between understandability and correctness and this is where the complexity lies, especially in cross-functional teams where you're explaining to a mixed group of technical and non-technical people. Imagine the kind of documentation you already have about your product's tech, like the technical specs, diagrams, wiki pages, Slack threads, etc. Now imagine having these in varying levels of abstraction. That's really complex, right? So this is why we want to talk about an approach that lets us have efficient communication at different levels of abstraction, and that's with the help of the C4 model. So now let's talk about what the whole C4 model is all about. The C4 model was created as a way to help software development teams 
describe and communicate software architecture, both during upfront design sessions and when retrospectively documenting an existing code base. It's a way to create maps of your code at various levels of detail. In the same way, you would use something like Google Maps to zoom in or zoom out of an area you're interested in. Now, in its simplest form, the C4 model is a lightweight approach to describing system architecture and consists of two things, a simple set of abstractions to describe your architecture and four code diagram types to visualize the abstractions. So let's talk about the first point, which is the set of abstractions. So there are four abstractions, the person who is the end user who uses the system, the system, which is the highest level of abstraction that delivers value to end users, on the container, which is the application and data stores that make up a system. An example would be the API service or the front end, the component, the building blocks and modules that make up a system. An example would be authentication module or payment card service. And let's talk about the second part, which are the four core diagrams. The four diagram levels are what give C4 its name, and they act as a visual map of your system with defined levels of abstraction. These abstraction levels are designed for your different audience types from non-technical high level to developer focused low level. Now remember, diagrams are not just for technical people. The simple set of abstractions ensures everyone is talking the same language when communicating about system design, reducing the confusion about terminology. C4 stands for context diagram, container diagram, component diagram, and code diagram. And think of them as cascading diagrams of the system as you zoom in. And this will help you visualize it better. So the context diagram is the most zoomed out. And then when you zoom in, you get the container diagram. You zoom in more and add some more technical details. You get the components diagram. And the lowest level diagram after you've zoomed in to the max is the code diagram. Now let's tackle each of these diagrams one by one. So this is the system context diagram. Now this is the highest level of abstraction. It showcases the basics of how your users interact with your system to get value. This is your zoomed out view showing a big picture of the system landscape. The focus should be on people, like the actors, roles, personas, etc., and software systems, rather than focusing on technologies, protocols, and other lower level details, which we'll cover anyways in the other diagrams. So this is sort of a diagram that you could show to non-technical people. So you can think of the container diagram as a zoomed in view of one of the systems from the system diagram showing the running objects inside. So a container is something like a server side application, a single page application, a desktop application, a mobile app, database schema, file system, etc. Essentially, a container is a separately runnable deployable unit. For example, a separate process space that executes code or stores data. The container diagram shows the high level shape of the software architecture and how responsibilities are distributed across it. It also shows the major technology choices and how the containers communicate with one another. It's a simple high level technology focused diagram that is useful for software developers and support and operations staff alike. This is the component diagram. This is a zoomed in view of one container showing the building blocks that make it run. So we started with the system context diagram. We zoomed into one of the systems. We got the container diagram. And we zoomed into one of the containers. And we are now with the component diagram. So the component diagram shows how a container is made up of a number of components and what each of those components are, their responsibilities, and the technology implementation details. This is the code diagram. This is usually in the form of UML class diagrams. It's rarely done in practice and can ideally be auto-generated from the actual code. So this is an optional level of detail and is often available on demand from tooling such as IDEs. Ideally, this diagram would be automatically generated using tooling. And you should consider showing only those attributes and methods that allow you to tell the story that you want to tell. This level of detail is not recommended for anything but the most important or complex components. Now the C4 model provides a static view of a single software system. But in the real world, software systems don't live in isolation. For this reason, and particularly if you're responsible for a collection or portfolio of software systems, it's awful useful to understand 
how these software systems fit together within a given enterprise, organization, or department. And this is why we have some supplemental diagrams to extend the capabilities of the C4. So let's quickly go over a few of these supplemental diagrams just for our knowledge. So this is the system landscape diagram. Essentially, this is a map of the software systems within the chosen scope with a C4 drill down for each software system of interest. From a practical perspective, a system landscape diagram is really just a system context diagram without a specific focus on a particular software system. Now, this is the dynamic diagram. Now, we know that with the help of these diagrams, we are going beyond the capabilities of the C4 model. And a dynamic diagram can be useful when you want to show how elements in the static model collaborate at runtime to implement a user story, a use case, a feature, etc. This dynamic diagram is based upon a UML communication diagram, which was previously known as UML collaboration diagram. It is similar to a UML sequence diagram, although it allows a free form arrangement of diagram elements with numbered interactions to indicate ordering. This is the deployment diagram. A deployment diagram allows you to illustrate how instances of software systems and containers in the static model are deployed onto the infrastructure within a given deployment environment. For example, production, staging, development, etc. It's based upon a UML deployment diagram. A deployment node represents where an instance of a software system container is running, perhaps physical infrastructure, virtualized infrastructure, containerized infrastructure, or an execution environment. You may also want to include infrastructure nodes such as DNS services, load balancers, firewalls, etc. Feel free to use icons provided by Amazon Web Services, Azure, etc. to complement your deployment diagrams. So in essence, the C4 model is a set of hierarchical abstractions like software systems, containers, components, code, to a set of hierarchical diagrams, which are system context diagrams, containers, components, and code. C4 model is also notation independent and tooling independent. While we've looked at the first two points, we need to quickly go over the last two points. Let's talk about notation independence. This basically means that you don't have to define or describe the elements in a particular way. You have creative freedom over that. And tooling independence means you can create these diagrams in any software that you like. You don't have to use a specific tool for this. This again gives you more creative freedom. Now let's learn about layering. Now layering is another important concept like abstraction that we just learned. It's a software architecture concept, but it's something that's also very common in system design. And this is what it looks like. So what you're essentially seeing are different layers in the sense a system can be represented as having various layers. For example, there's usually the UI, then the functionality, then the business logic, then the core logic of the application, and finally, the database layer. All of these together make up a system. Now, the thing is, there's no one right way to represent a system as a combination of layers, and it totally depends on your system as to how many layers you might need. Sometimes, you may need more layers, as can be seen in this diagram. Here we see that there's an additional persistence layer and also an infra layer, simply because the system needs it. Now, this is a great way to visualize a system and you can follow a layered approach to design a system. So for example, this is what a system designed with a layered approach might look like. So this was layering and I'm sure you're quite comfortable with concepts of abstraction, layering and the C4 model. All right, so you've learned quite a bit in this video. I hope things are getting clearer. And in case you were not able to follow along, make sure you watch the video again so that you're able to understand the concepts. You also need to subscribe to this channel so that you know whenever awesome content like this is uploaded. And don't forget to share this with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this content. I'll see you in the next video.